Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over engine management for the F-14. There's two versions of the F-14 in DCS, the A and the B. They're both pretty much the same, the only difference is that the B has a lot more powerful engines. But all the controls for the engines are the same between the A and the B, so almost everything in this video will be the same for both planes. First, let's look at all the gauges. Right here is the engine gauge. On the left, it shows the RPM. If you bring back your throttles, the RPM will go down. And if you push the throttles forward, the RPM will go up. Right here is the exhaust temperature, and on the right is the fuel flow. Here shows the position of the nozzles. If the gauge is at zero, it means the nozzles are almost all the way closed, and if it's at five, it means they're almost all the way open. You can see the movement of the nozzles right here. These gauges right here show the oil pressure. Next, there's these switches here. These control the positions of the inlet ramps. If you have them backwards, they're in automatic, and forwards, they're in stow. I'm not sure if they do anything in DCS, but I would just leave them in automatic. And then there's the engine crank switch. This is used for starting the engine. If you push it left, it'll start the left engine, and right for the right engine. Then there's the throttle mode here. If you have it on boost, in real life it makes it easier for the pilot to push the throttles. If you put it on manual, then the throttle will be directly connected to the linkages on the engine and it will be harder to push the throttles. If you put it on auto, it enables auto throttle mode and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Next, there's the temperature switch. There's normal, cold, and hot. According to the manual, this is supposed to kind of fine tune the engine. So if you put it on hot, it'll run with a little bit higher RPM and on cold, a little lower RPM. Now in DCS, it doesn't seem like this really does anything. It might just not be modeled, or maybe I'm just not doing it right, but I would just leave it in normal. Next, there's the throttles themselves. If you move them, obviously it adjusts the power of the engines. Also, if you bring the throttles all the way back, if you click on the left or right throttle, it'll put it into the off detent. And if you click it again, it'll put it into the idle detent. But that's only used for when you're starting up or shutting down the plane. Next is the air start switch. If you turn on the air start switch, it will enable an alternative ignition system and that is used for restarting the engine in the air, and I'll go over that a little bit later. Next, there's the engine mode switch. For the left and right engine, you can see there's primary and also secondary. I'm not sure how this works. The manual mentioned it, but it didn't really explain what it does, so I would just leave it in primary. Next is the asymmetric thrust limiter. This is for the afterburner. If you have this switch on, then when you turn on your afterburners, if one of them turns on first, It'll keep that afterburner at minimum power and wait for the other one to turn on. And that's because you don't want to have one afterburner running at full power when the other one is not even on yet. Because then your left engine might have a lot more thrust than the right engine or the other way around. On the right side, there's this switch here. This is the anti-ice for the engine inlets. If you have it in auto, then it will turn on the heater if it detects icing. If you have it in override, it'll just turn the heater on anyway. And if you have it off, it'll just turn it off. The last engine control are the fuel shutoff switches and the fire extinguishing switches. These yellow handles on the left and right, if you pull them back, they'll shut the fuel off to the engines. And when you pull them back, there'll be a little button right here, and if you click that button, it will deploy the fire extinguisher. And I'll go over that a little bit later in the video. Those were all the controls for the engines, now let's go over a couple things you can do. First I'll go over the auto throttle. The way that the auto throttle works is that when you're landing, if you turn it on, it will automatically move the throttle for you, and it will adjust the engine power to keep you at the right angle for landing. If I try to turn on the auto throttle, you see it just goes back to boost mode. So in order to turn it on, first your landing gear have to be down, and your engine RPM has to be between 75% and 90% RPM. Now if I click the auto throttle, you can see it turns on, and as I come into land, the throttle will move for me. If you want to turn off the auto throttle, there's two ways you can do it. The first way is by clicking this button, cage seam. If you click it, it flips back to boost mode. The other way you can turn off the auto throttle is by just moving the throttles yourself. Now let's go over the afterburner. On the throttle here, there's this white line. And if your throttles go just up to that white line, the afterburner will not turn on. But if you pass them, then it will turn on. There's not really much to say about the afterburner. The only thing to talk about is this switch here, which is the asymmetric thrust limiter. I already went over this in the beginning of the video, but in case you didn't see it, I'll go over it again. The way this works is that when the switch is flipped down, it's on. 
And when you turn on your afterburners, if one afterburner turns on first, it'll keep it at minimum power and wait for the other one to turn on. And the reason why is because you don't want to have one afterburner running at full power while the other one is not even on yet, because then the left engine might have a lot more thrust than the right engine or the other way around. And then once both afterburners are on, it'll bring them both up to full power. If you flip the switch up, it'll turn it off, but I would recommend just keeping it on and you can click the red cover to turn it back on. Now I'll go over what to do if you have an engine fire. If one of your engines are on fire, you need to pull the fuel shutoff lever. So for example, for the right engine, I'd pull this here. And then it's kind of hard to see, but just below it, there's a little switch. And if you click it, it'll dispense the fire extinguishing bottle. Now I'll go over what to do if your engine fails in the air. There's two ways you can restart your engine in the air. You can do a cross bleed start or you can do a windmill start. If one engine fails, you can do a cross bleed start. So for example, let's say my right engine fails. What you want to do is bring your right throttle all the way back and then click on it to turn it off. Then you want to have the other engine that's running be at at least 80% RPM. So you can see I'm at 100% RPM here, so I'm good. Then what you want to do is you want to flip up this switch that says air start and you want to crank the engine you need to start. So I'm going to crank the right engine. And then you want to watch the RPM and it should go up. Once the RPM gets to about 20%, I'm going to click on my throttle to put it into idle and then pretty soon it should start. Once the engine is started, you can bring the throttle up and you can put the ignition back to normal. Now I'll go over a windmill start. A windmill start is what you can do if both of your engines fail. In order to do a windmill start, you have to be at a high altitude because you need to point the nose down to get the plane to 450 knots. So let's say both of my engines failed. First, make sure both of your throttles are in the idle position and then turn on the air start switch. Then point your nose down and you need to get your airspeed to 450 knots. And you can check your airspeed with the gauge right here. Once you get to 450 knots, you should notice the RPM start to go up. And once the engines are started, you can turn off the air start switch and bring up your throttles. That was engine management in the F-14. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.